Hey YouTube, it's Cash. This video is about a long overdue revisit to Ithaca Optical Choppers. Please check out my Optical Chopper playlist for more detailed information on these devices. The main reason why I wanted to make another video is because in my last chopper video, Walter van Veldhoven gave me a design to use on the face of my Optical Chopper disc based on Rissé rhythms. I was experimenting with different pattern designs to trigger external devices. He had this design that he initially made for himself, but he never used it, so he thought it would be something that would work for what I was doing at the time. I couldn't have been more excited to make this idea a reality. I'll put a link in the description to his channel. If you're not familiar with his work, please check it out. When I used his design in my last Optical Chopper video, I felt I didn't highlight it enough because I had too many elements I was trying to incorporate. Foil tape is used to trigger simple wire switches on an arm that can be moved around to change the order and timing of the triggering in many ways. To help me highlight this design and triggering more, I had the idea to make a sound trigger box using these keychains that produce audio and have LED lights. These are made by the same company. They feature cameras, laser guns, turntables, birds, and more. I picked a few and simply wired them to be triggered from an external or internal switch. Some are wired to cut power to make a short trigger, and some are wired to the original button for the longest sound sample. I replaced the buzzer speaker with quarter inch jacks for audio out and powered all of the keychains with a few AA batteries. I made two demos for this video. Ithaca is from Ithaca, New York, which is about an hour and a half from me, so I was lucky to find this lock-in amplifier manual. I will take a deep dive on this in a later video because I want to focus more on the mods than the relationship between optical choppers and lock-in amplifiers. I will still be experimenting with a more passive relationship between the input and reference input. This disc, or blade, has very simple optical triggers, so I want to play that against a more complicated CV and audio to see how the lock-in amp will react. In this first demo, I focus on the relationship between the direct CV out of the pocket clocket against the optical trigger. In my opinion, this didn't produce the most favorable result, which is why I made two demos, but I still wanted to share it. The pocket clocket is being triggered by a split out of the keychain box and two of the CVs are used for either input or reference in of the lock-in amps. The optical chopper has two trigger outs and the disc has two simple but different patterns for both, also used for either of the input or reference in on the lock-in amps. I'm also using the foil triggers to affect this circuit bent sound effects machine, which you may have seen on my channel before. The sound effects is through the Chase Bliss mood and the keychain box is through the Chase Bliss habit. Both pedals are CV expressed by the pocket clocket.
This second demo is similar to the first, but instead of the direct CV to the lock-in amps, I use one of the CVs to trigger a racket metal, and the other CV to trigger a BCP data sequence generator, which then sequences an HP function generator before both going into the lock-in amps. I also reverse the Chase Bliss pedal so the habit is affecting the sound effects machine and the mood is affecting the keychain box. You will notice at the end the disc trigger stops in the on position so the keychain sample repeats. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.